all right welcome everybody happy monday hope you guys are all having a great start to the week just making sure everything's working on my end here just bear with me for a second i have small children that like to mess around with all my knobs and and such um got some other people in here yeah so welcome everybody to today's art business webinar my name is patrick i run the marketing department here at art store friends and been doing that for years and years and years and what is the point of this session what are we going to cover what is the ball game and the way we sort of look at things and think of things think of things at art store friends is you know somehow you got drawn into our ecosystem you found out about us you saw us on facebook instagram somebody told you whatever the case may be and you're wondering who are these people? What do they do? Can they actually help me grow my art career? Um, why do they send me so many emails? You have questions, right? You have questions. And we find that it's much easier to sort of do a session like this where we can kind of explain some of the ways that we think, how we look at this industry, what we think artists and photographers need to be focused on uh, if they want to actually grow a business and be successful at it. And so that's what we do. We run these sessions a couple days a week. And because I run the marketing department, I usually like to rant about some marketing related topics. Uh, and that will be the agenda for today. And so sort of how the session goes is um, I've got a video I made a couple of weeks ago that sort of talk about how important this season that we're in right now, Q4, it's basically from now till the end of the year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday buying season, it's, it's far and away. Uh, more art and photography will be sold in these next three months than in any other three months all year long, and it's not even close. So it's a very, very important season to understand as artists, as photographers, as creatives that you have to do some things. You have to let some people know that you exist. Uh, you have to run sales. You have to understand how all that works. And the good news is, is there's still plenty of time between now and when it really heats up, which is sort of around October or uh, Halloween-ish. Um, but, you know, we... We used to live in a civilized world. We would all have Thanksgiving with our families, and then the next day the shopping blitz would start, and that's all changed over the last like 10 years because now everybody moves their sale up one week or two weeks or three weeks, and now it's like you know, Halloween ends, and then it's just a straight-on blitz like through the rest of the year up to Christmas. So knowing that, what can we do to get ready? What can we do to put ourselves in a position to succeed? So I'm going to play the video about that. Afterwards, we will go into the Q&A where you can ask me any question about anything. It's very important to me uh, that you guys leave this session with some value, whether you ever decide to sign up for Art Storefronts or not. Um, I want you leaving with at least thinking about your business a little bit differently, um, maybe making some changes between now and the end of the year on how you can get your art and photography in front of more eyeballs. So that is the game plan. Um, as the session rolls along, there is at the bottom of your zoom window there is like a little chat box then you click this thing and it pops out like a little chat bubble thing and it pops out a box um as we're rolling along you can throw questions in there uh, if i can answer them right away i will answer them right away otherwise we can delve into them deeper uh in the q a section uh, which will be exciting so that's a game plan um for those for any reason that I have to leave or something comes up don't worry i have your email and as soon as this session ends I will send a replay. Uh, there'll be a replay uh, for the session, the Q&A. Also, all the links and things that I mentioned, because I mentioned a bunch of things in the video, and usually things come up. So I will send links to all of the above. Um, so you will have that in your inbox. You can watch it later. You know, you don't have to worry about, like, what was that link? What did he mention? Don't worry. I'm going to send it all to you. So you'll have all of it. So that is the game plan. Uh, I will see you guys just on the other side of this video, and we can get into the Q&A and excited about it. All right, let me get this going, and then off we go. Okay, and let's talk about the three and to give it some teeth. Um, let's just say a a three start time. time. We have a little bit over ten thousand customers at our storefronts. I get to see all their data, uh, not only on who's selling what, what prices, this, that, and the other, but also like where did you know where did the, their traffic come from that actually led to these sales. What I've come to realize in all of that is there's only three ways. Three viable ways to make it today as an artist, photographer wants to sell their creations. Only three. And let's talk about the three and to give it some teeth. Um, let's just say a, a successful art business. I know everyone's definition of that is a little bit different, right? But for the sake of argument, let's just say a successful art business is an art business and wish you have gross sales of $100,000 a year, right? Sounds like a lofty number. Fine. But let's just say that. So, okay. There's only three ways to get there. Number one way, the way that everyone on this call would prefer to do get into a gallery, 
where all you have to do is create and they do everything else. That sounds awesome, right? Okay, let's let's work those numbers through. You're in a gallery, you're doing $100,000 a year in gross sales. The gallery takes 50%. So that means at the end of the day, you get $50,000 back. And because it's gross sales, then you have to subtract your studio, your materials, your trips, your tripods, your lenses, all of that, and maybe you're left with $35,000. Hardly a living wage. Let's make that picture a little bit rosier. And by the way, the number of artists that are in that situation that are, that are selling $100,000 a year in a gallery is probably less than 1% or 2% of the total artists and photographers that are out there trying to sell their art and photography. Right. Let's make that picture a little bit rosier and let's say $300,000. Okay, let's triple it in, in gross sales a year in a gallery. And with the aforementioned 50% haircut, 150, okay, you're making 100 grand a year. That's fantastic. That's less than 1%, probably less than 0.2% of artists and photographers out there. So in terms of like a, a viable path forward, the way that I like to explain making it in a gallery is it, to, to have that level of success that way as an artist or photographer is kind of like playing a sport versus being a professional athlete. How many people do you know play a sport? How many professional athletes do you know, right? Like the odds are just not fantastic. And the real death knell to the gallery model is you guys are all going to be artists and photographers for the rest of your life. I routinely get people on these calls in their 90s still trying to sell their art, yeah, which is amazing. And, and you realize yeah. it's the long game. Wherever you are, you have a ton of time left, right, to do this, God willing, of course. If you don't know who's purchasing your art and you can't market to them for the rest of your life, you don't have the ability to develop collectors. Collectors are folks that will come back and keep buying from you again and again and again, and year after year after sorry. year. And it's the lifeblood of any art business in the gallery model you don't know because the gallery doesn't tell you who purchases. It's important to state that, important to understand that. All right, let's table the gallery model for a sec. Next is to become a road warrior. A road warrior is someone that does anywhere from 25 to 45 shows a year. The fairs, the shows, the farmer's markets, the this is the that's, and you are loading that car up, setting up the booth. Sometimes it's a dud, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's inclement weather, you're away from your family, you're eight hours a day on your feet. It is not easy. It's hard. That being said, totally viable path to get there. Mm -hmm. If I was an artist myself and I was like looking back at my life and I wanted to give my like 20 year old self some advice, okay, Emma, talking to you, you're the young one here, it would be like, don't have wife, don't have, don't, don't have a significant other, don't have kids, don't have a mortgage. And if you have any of those things, it's, it's just a generalization. You're the young one and I'm looking at you. So go and do that when you're young. Because if you can do that when you're young, when you don't have the aforementioned significant other and kids and soccer games on Saturdays and a mortgage, that's when you're the freest to be able to do that. And it's totally a viable path. Like I've got multiple customers that are in their 50s and 60s that did it for years and years and years. One guy I think of, this guy Bill Stidham, 175,000 miles on his van in six years that he just used for his art shows. I mean, he hit it hard. You know what that guy has now? Healthy six-figure a year business and he barely does any shows anymore because he built up the list, he built up a customer base, he built up collectors. The third way, okay, is what everybody really truly has to do. It's, it's what you want to do, which is, I know I'm not gonna get into a gallery, I know I'm not doing the show in their circuit, that's just too much, I can't be that road yeah. warrior. I I, so I, I wanna sell I direct, I wanna understand who's purchasing my work, and it's totally a viable path. It's what we advocate. Here's the rub, though. You have to market your own art. You have to market your own art. There is no one that is going to market it for you. And for some people, that is a painful thing to hear. For most artists and photographers, it's a painful thing to hear. But it's true. Anyone that's been in this business for any period of time knows that you guys are all sold a bill of goods that somehow an artist or a photographer's location is just to create this amazing thing and everything else just happens and nothing could be further from the truth. You have to get good and understand that marketing yourself is just as important a job as creating what you create. And the sooner you come to terms with that, the way better your life becomes. Why? Because there's never been a better time in the history of the world to do it. Not even close. I mean, for those of us that are older and remember the days before these things existed, and before social networks with hundreds of millions of people worldwide uh, were on their phones all day long, do you know how hard it was? Do you know how much harder it was? You were geographically fixed on the planet somewhere and that's where you started and that's what you had. You had to grind way harder. Now, if you take your marketing vocation seriously, if you're like, I'm going to get good at this, if you realize that your art business is essentially two trains on two tracks, 
Train number one, your art, your craft, your creations, your subject matter material, your brush, your lens, how good you get with all of that. That train has its own path and it will go throughout the rest of your career. You wanna get better at it. You wanna make sure that train has no breaks. The other one is how good you get at marketing yourself and you need to treat it seriously and you need to turn it into an art form. And if you understand those two things, that is the path that artists and photographers get on, will become successful, will have a business that is growing year after year after year. And I really firmly do believe there's never been a better time in the history of the world to do that. But, but it's actually simple. Simple, not easy. Not easy in the fact that you guys have to get good at marketing. Not good that you have to take so it seriously. No Not good that you have to, have to learn how to do this. Right. And nobody likes doing it. I totally get that. Okay? I mean, I run the marketing department here. Truth be told, I don't even like doing it. Okay? Posting on socials on a regular basis. Content marketing. Right? Running sales. All the things that you have to do. But I don't know what the alternative is. I don't know what the alternative is. When is because I, of all the tens of thousands of artists and photographers that have come through these Zoom sessions in the last three years, there are maybe... One or two that were doing great in the gallery, and I saw spe specifically like right when COVID hit and all those gallery people got closed up, those people were flooding into these Zooms going, what do I do? I've got nothing. My income's done, right? It was terrifying. The road warriors are the road warriors. And then there's nothing else. You know, there's nothing else. Like I've had like six people tell me they make more $10,000 a year on Saatchi, Fine Art America, Redbubble. I've had a couple of people on Etsy that are doing like twenty dollars or $30,000 a year, but I haven't heard anyone else. So when you, content, when you realize those odds, and please don't take it cynically, like this is only going to happen for you if you sign up at Art Storefronts. I don't care where you sign up or what you do. But I do care that if you want to take this business seriously and you want to see it growing year after year, it's the two trains, two tracks, no brakes. Two trains, two tracks, no brakes. Okay. Um, now that that rant is over with, I, don't think so. I call this thing a Q4 boot camp, and I love the marathon analogy, all right? I hate running. I will never sign up for a marathon in my life. But I know some people that have, and there's one thing that you notice about those people that sign up for the marathon. As soon as you fill out that form for that miserable activity, your whole life changes. Why? You know the pain is coming. You start eating a little bit better. You start training and taking your exercise more seriously. You start getting better sleep. If it's me, you work on that drinking habit that you have, right? All of these things in your life, you start taking more seriously. And my contention, having been in this business for close to 10 years now and having seen what goes on in Q4 the last three months of the year, it's a marathon that you're signed up for whether you know it or not. And the training that you do between now and then, between the fourth quarter, the buying season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the ride up, the roll up to Christmas, all of those sales that are in the water, all throughout that. All right. More art, more photography is sold in the fourth quarter exactly. than the other three quarters combined almost sometimes. Like our, our, our customers that do it well have, have a good year based on what that fourth quarter is. And so my contention is, is that you're signed up for that marathon whether you know it or not. And the question is, what are you going to start doing between now and then? What are you going to start doing between now and then to get ready? Because if it's wait, until the, the, the you know things start getting colder, kids are back at school. You're running around like a crazy person. Next thing you know, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, did I? I yeah, I gotta have a sale. And then you post something on Facebook and send an email to six people. Not gonna be good. Not gonna be good, right? So we need to start training now, right? We need to start getting our businesses in order now. And there's a number of different ways that you can approach that and that you can contemplate it. But step one in all of it is have it in the back of your head. It's coming. What you do between now and then is going to dictate the level of success that you have, and it is the most important time of the year to be selling. Without question, not even close. And you have to have your art up on the website. You have to start working on an email list. You have to start marketing regularly and consistently on the social media platforms. If you do that, if you do that now, you're going you're gonna to wake up come October, and you're going to be like, oh, got a little momentum in my back things actually look pretty good here. People actually know who I am and I have the ability to market and run some sales when Black Friday and Cyber Monday comes along. So very, very important to understand that happens every single solitary year. Every year it is absolutely fantastic uh, uh, in, in terms of sales, in terms of sales, in terms of art and photography. So all very, very important. Pricing is another big one. And pricing is one of my favorite topics uh, uh, in this business period, right? And do you know what I love more than anything else? All the bullshit advice that's out there based on pricing. 
Here's the formula that you use for pricing. It's material cost times square inch times media times times your time. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks for that. Magic, really. The only thing that matters is whether or not the art sells. There is no magical formula that's going to help you price your art that it, if the art doesn't sell, which is why all of those formulas are nonsense. Pricing is quite simply this. And it's awesome and it's freeing. And once you do it, once you realize this lesson, and I have like a really in-depth article on this and I'm going to send it to all of you. You, creative types, need to have prices from zero to 100. You need to have prices from 100 to 1,000. You need to have prices over 1,000. And you need to have one thing in the shop that is obscenely expensive, okay? Now let me break that all down with some real numbers. The zero to 100 is really, really easy, especially if you're reproducing your artwork in terms of prints. Uh, but you also have to have non-wall art as a part of your lineup, okay? It can't just be wall art. And the reason is, is that not everybody is ready to buy wall art all the time. And so you're out there, you're doing your marketing, you're getting your art, your photography in front of people, and they're like, wow, I really like this person. I really like their creativity. Problem, I'm not in the market for art right now. I want to reward this person for their talent, but I'm not in the market for art right now. If only they had something that was non-wall art related. Oh, they don't. Tell you what. I'll make a mental note to come back here. I'm going to go watch some cat videos, and we, we know what the masks do there, right? They're not coming back. They're never coming back. So the importance of having the non-wall art is so critical. No one talks about this enough. A business, specifically your guys' businesses, can be judged how well they are growing on one metric and one metric alone. The number of new customers you are acquiring per year the number of new customers you are acquiring per year. Why? Why? Because the easiest customer to get is the one that you already have. It is significantly easier to get somebody to come back and purchase a second time than it is to go out and find a new person and, and have them purchase for the first time. And this is just a fundamental rule of most businesses, but specifically this business. And I alluded earlier to how important it is to, to not sell in galleries so that you know who is purchasing your work. There is a phenomenon in here. I, s I stole it from this guy, so I always give him credit. Hold on, let me grab his book. I stole this from Wyland, okay? Wyland is the whale guy. Most would say the best-selling artist in the United States. By the way, this book, fire, okay? Insane, amazing. You need to go buy it. Honestly, I should be, I should, I should be on commission for this. In fact, he's got a gallery close to where I live. I'm going to go in there and get it. Short, sweet, no fluff. Oh, I'm sorry, here's. But the, the rub is it's not on Amazon. I think he donates 100% of the, the proceeds to charity, so you have to buy it from his website. But honestly, Google this book and buy this book. Wyland defines a collector as someone that will purchase in upwards of seven plus pieces of art from him over the course of a lifetime. And this is a phenomenon I see played out continually with my own customer base. But when you have collectors, it's like it's a phenomenon of this business, right? Like there are certain product categories that, that, that have collectors, right? If you ask my seven-year-old kid, it's those damn Pokemon cards. They're all over my floor right now. You have to laugh if you saw these. But shoes, cars, wristwatches, art is one of them. And it's a fantastic thing because you will keep creating throughout the course of your life. And these collectors will just go along for the ride. You keep raising prices, they keep coming and, 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 and buying and buying and buying. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Emma just said that that book is on Spotify for free. I did not know that. Definitely listen to it. You want to highlight it, though. I'm not kidding. Great book. Um... Where was I going with all that? Ah, so if we know the most important thing an art business can have as a collector, and then we know in order for a collector to become a collector, they first have to purchase something, that underscores how important it is to have non-wall art as a part of the lineup, okay? That's the zero to 100 range. Also in there, you obviously have small prints. And then let's say you're 100 to 1,000, you get into some bigger size prints, right? your metals, your canvas, your acrylic, you go through that zero to a thousand range and maybe close to the thousand range, you're in limited editions and then above that you have your originals. Everyone has to adjust it a little bit to taste. But you also need something obscenely expensive in the store. And let's say that you sell your originals just to keep the math simple at like a thousand bucks. I want one in there for 10 grand. And why, why, why one in there for 10 grand? That's crazy, I'm never gonna sell that thing. I don't even care if you don't ever sell that thing. You ever been to a car dealership? And you know in the car dealership, that the big glass box in the middle, I know the car dealership is a miserable, miserable feeling in most people's heads because you have to deal with the salespeople. But anyway, the big glass box in the middle, right? Let's say we're at the, the Toyota dealership. And that big glass box in the middle is the Toyota Supra Carbon Fiber TRD whatever. 
it's two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars right there's a reason that they put those cars inside the glass box and it's because human beings are wired to make purchase decisions based on comparison we anchor onto certain things to compare to other certain things and so when we go and look at that $250,000 Super or the $150,000 Land Cruiser that's inside the glass box, we anchor onto that price point and it makes us feel just that much better about buying the $60,000 Highlander, right? That's on the outside. And that's a phenomenon called price anchoring. And it's just one of these psychological things that's really, really, really important to do. You feel better knowing that I didn't buy the most expensive thing. It makes you feel a little bit better. That's why you put that high priced item in there. Also, also, Everyone's followers, yours, mine, any business, that all fall into a thing that I call the socioeconomic bell curve, okay? It's your typical bell curve, exactly what you'd expect. And down at the low end of it, you have the low socioeconomic status. Those people can't afford anything. They'll like, comment, share on your post. They're still good people. Then you have lower income folks, middle class, upper middle class, high net worth individuals, the bell curve, right? You know, what, what does everyone always say to me all the time? Yeah, I just, I just want to target high net worth buyers. Yeah, good. That's great. You and every other business on the planet, aside from the 99 cent store, wants to target the high net worth buyers, okay? That is why it's insanely difficult to do that. But the point is, you need to have this range of pricing that I'm discussing to be able to cover all of the spots on that bell curve. Because what happens when you do that is you acquire the highest number of customers possible. And the beautiful thing about acquiring the highest number of customers possible is you can market to these folks in the future. The bell curve is not a fixed entity. Your buyers and potential buyers are going up and down that bell curve their entire lives. The one that's living in their mother's basement right now is buying their new house two years from now. And you got that sale. Do you want to know why you got that sale? Because you sold them a mug or a mouse pad uh, 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 or a calendar or, or, or a whatever. And it sat on their fridge. It could be a sticker, okay, that's on my garage fridge with all the rest of the stickers. And every time I go out to get a beer, which is an enjoyable experience for me, I look at your art, okay? Now I've moved out of my mother's basement and I'm going to go buy a house and you got that sale. And that's how it works. And I get a lot of pushback on the merch, okay? I'm a fine artist, Patrick. I would never sell that merch, that cheap tchotchke crap. I'm not doing that. To which I respond, let me know the last time any of you went to a museum that didn't have a gift shop. I'll wait, okay? If Van Gogh's Starry Night is on the wall and you can also buy a Starry Night poster in the gift shop for $22 plus tax, I'm pretty sure Van Gogh's not losing any sleep over it. Technically, he's really asleep. He's dead, but you get the point, okay? You get the point. You ever been to a concert that hasn't had merch? I don't think so, okay? The Rolling Stones, take your pick, okay? Merch is very, very important in the simple lens that you acquire more customers as a result of it. So having that price range is huge. What is one of the most defeating things that happens to artists and photographers out there? You worked hours on a piece. I mean, hours. It took so much time. You're gonna sell this thing for 800 bucks and what happens? Someone's like, yeah. That's beautiful. Would you take $25 for it? Oh, you're just deflated, right? Like this guy, this person is just, I mean, it's like a troll on social media. I mean, they have just ruined your entire day. The beautiful thing is when you have the range of pricing, it doesn't happen as much. It almost doesn't happen at all because people understand they have a context of where things are in your lineup. Oh, this is $100 and under. Oh, this is 100 to 1000. Oh, this is over 1000. Oh, that's that's the $5000 piece. And what's more, when you get those folks who don't know any better, okay? Most of them are not the people. They just don't know any better. You can be like, "Oh, that's fantastic. I I love that you have the interest. That one costs quite a bit more, but let me show you what is in your range." And then we gently guide them to where we are in our range. Do you know much better that is for your self-esteem? Okay, let me tell you. Significant it is significantly better for your self-esteem. You are gonna be a happier and better functioning member of society, okay? Your significant other is like, this is awesome. Why are you in such a good mood? It's because you have the range of pricing. Very, very important. That's pricing. I'm gonna send you a follow-up article on it after this whole thing's over. In addition to the pricing, the next thing I wanna talk about is Instagram. Most important social network for artists and photographers. It's not even close. Secondarily, it's Facebook, okay? Have to be working on both of them. Well, Patrick, what about, what about TikTok or what about Pinterest or what about SEO? Yeah, what about shiny objects that are not going to move your business anywhere and are going to put you on the road to a hobby? All right, that's what all the rest are. 
I don't care what anyone else says, anyone's friends, anyone, anyone. No one is selling art on any of the rest of those things, okay? They are lying to you if they're saying they are. It's nonsense. I've looked at way too much data. Aside from onesies, twosies here with weird circumstances, the two most important places that you need to be are Instagram and secondarily Facebook. And thank God for that. Okay, don't talk to me about TikTok. I will kick you right out of this zoo. You are lying to yourself, okay? Stupid Chinese app, communist app that is just trying to flood you with an endorphin hit. You got 10,000 views. You didn't get 10,000 views. You got 100 views from people that are never going to buy your work, okay? So when we stay focused on the only two, the only two uh, platforms that matter to the detriment of wasting time on any of the rest of those ones, I don't care. I don't care. Just stay out of there. Stay in my lane. Facebook and Instagram, Instagram and Facebook. You will end up winning. And why is Instagram the most important? What do you guys create? You create visual creations. What is Instagram? A giant visual search engine. Imagine that. Lines up pretty nicely, right? The beautiful thing is that Instagram has become, over the years, evolved into the credit check for artists and photographers. What do I mean by that? I'm going to buy something. I saw something. My neighbor had something. I, it's really important for me to keep up with the Jones. I'm going to go look at what he got, and what am I doing? I'm going instantaneously to Amazon. I'm going to read the reviews. Was that thing good? Is there a better one? Maybe there's a better one. Maybe I can one-up this guy because i got to keep up with the Jones. Now, we check Amazon is a way of getting credit checks, like getting the reviews of what something is, right? So you could say Consumer Reports or some of the other sites too. For artists and photographers, it's like, hey, I just saw this. Art. I, I, I mean, I'm at your friend's house. You sold some art to your friend. I saw that. That's a great piece. Who did that? Oh, yeah. It's, it's my buddy. It's my cousin, uh, Mark McClanahan over there. And uh, you should check him out. You know what they're going to do? They're going to pull out Instagram, and they're going to look for you, and they're going to look at your profile, and are they going to say, is this an artist that's doing anything? Is this an artist that's putting out content regularly? Are they on the up and up? Do they have two followers or 2,000 followers, right? And it's very, very important to understand, one, that Instagram offers a credit check, okay? So fundamentally, it's important just for that matter. Two, secondarily, and I, and I should also say, like, you know, the data in this industry is so utterly, totally, completely opaque, right? Like, there's so much nonsense out there, it's mind-boggling. But there's two outfits that report on the super high end of the art market. One's the Hiscox Group, it's an insurance uh, entity out of London, and the other is... Art Basel teams up with uh, UBS Payne Weber, I think. I think that's who it is. The two of them put out a report. And what they do is they uh, survey every year all of the folks that are essentially buying $100,000 pieces and up. And every single solitary year, I've watched the results of those reports when it comes out. And every year, it ticks up. Did you follow and or consume content from an artist on Instagram? Was Instagram influential in your buying decision? And in both cases, both of their surveys, like those percentages are really pretty high. So it's significant in its ability to help you guys sell art. The top end, high end buyers are all there, okay? So that makes it very important as well. The beautiful thing about Instagram is you can reach a ton of buyers. The terrible thing about Instagram is you have to post frequently on it for years to really make a huge dent. So yeah, one, you gotta get started. Two, you have to understand you're gonna suffer in the short term because it's not easy and you have to learn how to do it and you have to learn how to enjoy it and get good at it. And we can talk about that in depth. I have a ton of teaching on Instagram. But the beautiful thing that exists currently on Instagram, and I love this. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little social media history lesson. But Facebook emerged. Facebook pretty much became a monopoly, okay? It was power was unchecked. Then a new rising competitor came along and Facebook is like, uh-oh, we can't have any competition. It was Instagram. We're going to go buy those folks. So they bought them. Okay, great. Now Facebook's even more powerful. It's Facebook and Instagram. I'm streaming on their platform when I'm saying this, so I get banned. You guys won't know why. Zuckerberg kicks my door, and you'll know why. So now they own these two platforms. So the playbook was, we are a monopoly. If any competitors come along, we're just going to buy them. Okay, Snapchat emerges. Snapchat starts taking all of these young kids away from Facebook and Instagram. They're like, all right. Uh, what does the playbook say to do in this situation? Uh, let me see the playbook. Mark, it says if we have a competitor, go and buy him. All right, somebody go and buy Snapchat. So they go and try and buy Snapchat. Snapchat says pound sand. Mark's like, okay, what does the playbook say now? Uh, we don't know. He goes, all right, we're just going to copy them verbatim. And so Snapchat had these things called stories that disappeared after 24 hours, and Facebook copied them verbatim. Verbatim. So, okay. Now... Snapchat peters out. I mean, who's using that? I don't know. Some kids, whatever. It's, 
it's 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 on it's it's right, whatever. I don't want to talk about. It. The next one came along. This time it was TikTok, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg went right back to the playbook. He's like, okay, this is awesome. TikTok is starting to steal a bunch of our users. It's competition. What should I do? Let's go try and buy them. He goes and tries and buy them again. They tell him no. He said, my wife is Chinese. Let me buy you. They still said no. So the next thing they do is they're like, okay, what does the playbook say next? Copy them verbatim. And so that's what they did. And by the way, the other social players were watching. And now YouTube watched. And they're like, okay, let's copy them verbatim. So what did TikTok have? These short form little videos that were 120 seconds or less and were very compelling cell phone style video size. They copied that feature verbatim and called it Instagram Reels. YouTube saw that, copied that feature verbatim, called it YouTube Shorts. I could cycle through the three views of those three different products and you could almost not tell the difference. They even put their buttons in the same place as copycats. Anyway, why it was a brilliant thing, TikTok coming along, is it destroyed what has been up to that point in time in the social contract. What is a social contract? What do I mean by that? Hey, uh, art store friends, work really hard on my platforms, Facebook and Instagram, and post a bunch of content. When you do, people will follow you and become fans. After you earn those followers and those fans, some small portion of what you create will be shown to those followers and fans for free. Early on in the days, it was like 90%. Recently, it's like two to 5%. Tiny, almost nothing, right? So that is what the social contract was. TikTok, God bless him, despite the fact that I don't like the platform and think it's evil, has been si still siphoning off users from Instagram at an alarming rate. It's all the younger kids and the people that are chasing likes that are not real and chasing views that are not real. It's a worthless platform. Anyway, so what they've done is they've torn up the social contract. So now where we are is we're in a scenario where you can get onto Instagram and you can have two followers, your significant other and your mother, okay? She likes and comments on everything. God bless you. Thank you, Mom. You can create content in the form of an Instagram reel. And an Instagram reel can potentially, if it's good, be seen by hundreds, by thousands, by even millions. In which case, you organically marketing without leaving your house, showing off your creations, understanding the platform, can get free reach. It, it used to be you didn't get that. And it used to be you had to pay a ton of money uh, in terms of Facebook and Instagram ads to get that attention. Now you can do that without leaving your house. And that's an incredible, incredible thing. So it represents a huge, huge opportunity. And so that's where we stand right now as it sits in 2023. I believe Instagram is the most uh, 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 amazing platform that exists uh, that can bring you guys buyers, bring you guys fans, bring you guys email addresses, and yes, sell your art with photography, but you have to get good at marketing it. You have to understand how to post. You have to work on your posting frequency, and you have to learn to love it. Which does get easier uh, in time. You know, it's, it was interesting for me to watch that this time because I haven't, um, I've updated my thinking quite, quite a bit since then, right? And one of the things that I've been ranting about recently, like literally in the last two weeks, or maybe if you listen to the podcast, you've heard it. I believe that art sales are 50-50, okay? 50-50, what do I mean? It's 50% the art, the quality of the art, what it looks like, the subject matter, material, the medium, all of that. And then it's 50% the artist, by which I mean, who are you? What makes you interesting? What makes you tick? Are you a dog person or a cat person? Where do you live? How old are you? Um, do you like food? Do you work out? Do you paddle kayaks? Are you into gardening, right? It doesn't matter. Human beings are, are inevitably, we like to bond with people under shared, uh, 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 shared likes and interests, right? Or in some cases, shared multiple, you know, shared suffering, right? Like, do you have kids? I have kids. Did you step on a Lego and almost break your neck this morning? So did I. Now we're bonding, those types of things, right? And yet, when I go and look at artists or photographers' profiles, one universal truth seems to be true. The majority of you, the artist loves hiding behind the canvas and the photographer loves hiding behind the lens, right? If I come to your Instagram profile and if I see a giant grid of two-dimensional art, meaning just photos of your art, photo after photo after photo after photo after photo, and I don't see anything of you, who you are, what makes you tick, what makes you interesting, and I'm not, I'm not saying you have to be a Kardashian, okay? You don't have to dress promiscuously and have a camera crew follow you around 24 seven, but you have to share a little window into your world, who, what makes you tick, what makes you interesting, what, what do you do that I might get bonded to you with? 
And that's what the beautiful thing about it is. As hard as that is to sound, because a lot of you are introverts and you love hiding behind the aforementioned lens or ca canvas and you're terrified of doing this and you don't like being on video, right, is what's crazy is I, I got 11,000 customers, right? And we meet regularly every single solitary week. So I've seen them. It, it, every, every type of person imaginable in all seasons of life, all over this country, other countries selling multiple things, everything in between. Good on video, terrible on video, uh, 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 major introverts, it stutters and stammers and the whole thing. Once you start getting out of your shell a little bit and you share the world that you're in and the life that you live and what makes you tick and what gives you that creative eye, people inevitably just bond with it. The more real it is, the faster it happens. And yet almost no one does enough of that, right? They think that they can get away with some sort of ratio that's like 95-5, right? What's well, 95% my art and 5% who I am. And I'm here to tell you I don't believe that to be the case. People want to know who you are, right? And how are they going to find out? They're going to go to your Instagram profile. And if they go to your Instagram profile and it's just photos of the art after the art after the art after the art, and then there's one little artsy one that you show like a corner of your face, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. And trust me, I don't like it either. But I'm contrarian enough to understand that this is the world that we live in, right? Like back in the day, we were all limited to our geographic corner of the world. Now, with this thing, you get online, you start posting, you're able to build a following, you're able to get your art all over the place. And that's amazing. That's an amazing thing. I 100% believe this is the best time in history to ever be an artist, a photographer. And really, what are you guys are creators, right? What is the buzzword? The creator economy. That's what all the, uh, the tech people like saying. But they're not wrong. They're not wrong. Like for the first time in history, you guys are able to get your creations in front of more eyeballs than at any other time in history. That's amazing, right? The rub of it, though, is that in order for that to happen, you have to do regular and consistent marketing. Almost everybody on this call has never done regular and consistent marketing their entire lives. There is a number of reasons for that. You don't like it. You don't want to do it. It doesn't come natural to you, right? In the, in, the, in the sad, brutal, vicious cycle of it, and again, I've, I've been hosting three of these calls like this a week, some misses here or there, since, since right when COVID started, the sheer number of artists and photographers, let alone my own customers I've talked to, I, I can make some of these snap judgment calls. Artists and photographers treat the marketing of their business, which you all intuitively know you have to do, by the way, like New Year's resolutions. This is gonna be my year. I'm going to take this art career seriously. I'm going to turn this thing into a business. It's no different than January's coming around and I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to start going to the gym four days a week in January. And I'm doing that all January. And then March comes around and I haven't been once. And then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You have to fix the main problem. Marketing is the main problem. That's it. So that is my updated rant on the rant. Um, but enough of that. We can get into the Q&A, see where things go. Um, where I can talk about some other stuff. How does Q&A work? If you're one of the brave ones, okay, that has your camera on, I appreciate you. That is going to help you out greatly in your marketing, whether or not you know it or not. You can do the old school hand raise. I will see that. I can bring you on. Um, for everyone else, there's this smiley face thing on the bottom of the Zoom. It says reactions. You can click that, and that gives you a way to raise your hand digitally speaking. And I got you, Jonathan. I'll, I'll grab you first. Um, and then that lets me know you want to come on. If you don't want to turn your camera on, you don't have to turn your camera on, okay? I hate being on video, okay? I have a face for radio, but this is my job. So I don't have any option. So I'm, I'm, I have to be on video. So you can ask just via audio. And then if you're one of the ones that's watching on the socials, um, Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter, I can see your comments and I can bring you on. Someone said already, I just, I'm glad I don't have TikTok. I replied, I agree. I hate TikTok, but that's one thing at a time. All right, so Jonathan, I'm going to grab you first. It's really funny that you referenced that book, dude. That book has got to be like 15 years old now. The, the, $100, the $100 Startup by Chris Gillibu. Yeah, $100 Startup is a great book because yeah. it, it, it goes over how you can uh, create a business. It doesn't matter whether it's what it is, yeah. art or technology or entrepreneurship it goes over how you can start a startup business from home um with as little as a hundred dollars and it gives you the mindset of of uh, how do i work for myself rather than working for a large corporation uh, uh et cetera et cetera that guy was that guy already, was way 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 ahead of his time I'm looking when that book was released because i remember i bought it yeah, right when it yeah. came out it was a long time ago it's a very good book. 2012. Uh, 2012. I, I, won, I 
was awarded this book at a in in college uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. It's called the Blue Ocean Strategy. It's it's on marketing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a market expert. I I read through a you know a couple chapters of this, um, and it does it goes into the gist of uh, marketing and advertising mm -hmm. about how uh, when you when you market, you want to you know it, it figuratively talks about how you want to flip. Uh, uh, they, they call it a red ocean into a blue ocean. So it's it's basically about um, standing out from the crowd. It's not it's not about competing. It's about being so different from your competition that that your customers and clients don't even pay attention to the competition. Love it. Yeah. So that's one book I wanted to recommend. Uh, uh, this one I'm still in the middle of reading, The War of Art, or The War of Art. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of this book? Yeah, I I know the author personally actually. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, Stephen Pressfield. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, have I've read the first two or three chapters? I haven't. You're I, I you're like, you're on the path, Jonathan. You're reading the classics. You're reading the classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, it this is this is my this is a, a journey. It's it's all um, self guided. Uh, you 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 search for answers by going you know going to the bookstore, going to the library, uh, seeing you know studying studying artists that have made it have ma have got it made mm -hmm. and. Um, understanding learning what they've done correctly yep. and then emulating them and uh one of the one i think one do you know do you know do you know what you said in all of that because i could easily push back at that statement so hard it would probably sure. blow your mind is yeah. yes yeah. what i loved what you said is emulate okay and do you know what emulate denotes taking action and doing something so you can read and you can read a ton okay and yeah. you could study what the art, other artists are doing and you can study a ton and I, I totally find that to be extremely valuable, but not if you're just reading and studying. You gotta be shipping and you gotta be shipping every single solitary day because there's nothing like the learnings that come from you know shipping. I have, there's another one of these things that like paralyzes you guys as a community and thinking things through, over analyzing, should I do it this way? And should I do it that way? And what if I did this and what? No, 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 no just do it just do it today like it's funny because we have this line internally and we stole it from software in software it's um just ship it did you, what did you ship did you ship any code right did you commit any yeah. code and so i end up screaming that at my customers all the time like just ship it just <laughs> ship it get going ship it today right yeah yeah um but what was your question uh didn't have a question i i just wanted to share uh with with uh the other artists on here that okay. uh, if you're looking for answers and are, are finding it that, you know, you have writer's block or you're stuck, these are, these are, these are invaluable books. books, you know? Yeah. And to summarize, to summarize my uh, spiel, uh, I think the quote is, uh, what is it? Copying is the, is a form of flattery or uh, is the greatest form of flattery or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Did you, and get, and get, get, um, Wyland's book too, if you haven't already. That one's really I, good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, a, it's cheap, but it's, it's, it's really, really good. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, who else? All right, Yana, I'm going to get you. I saw you. Hi, thank you very much for this. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, maybe you can help me to understand how to access the market of art. Um, position myself better. Mm -hmm. I graduated as a sculptor and mm -hmm. I ended up um, walking out of the university using my own body as a medium. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't even study art, art performance much. And mm -hmm. suddenly I'm doing this and going out there and getting so much attention, but I'm kind of <laughs> discovering that it's a very challenging, um, at least it's been for me, mm -hmm to market it, to deal with the galleries. They want the attention that the art performance creates, but they don't want to pay me. I don't know how to negotiate this. And every time I create an art performance and, uh, or a happening, I have all these people filming, photographing, this photographer is jumping on me. I've been to, three days after I, I got into the US, I moved to the US, I moved to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. and oh I no, not this late, piece. was it this latest one? No, it was no, 2011. It was Got it. 2011. All right. All right. And I was uh, with my mirror suit. I was create, I've been um, creating art using the seeds and talking about the minded body. 
And I went there and made this performance and this artist from New York called Master Kuhayu took a photo and he sold it to all over the world without my credit, he knew my name. So all over the world, this image came out as an anonymous artist. To be sincere, I like to be in the background and not me. I don't want to be famous. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have that desire. But you know that image being all over the going all over the world without as an anonymous artist immediately if you go on Google people started making it all over and artists start copying in, uh, in New York suddenly I'm having to contact a, a lawyer to deal with copyrights and it, it became such a complicated thing <laughs> you know and then I'm dealing with a copyright and telling people, hey, you wouldn't have this photo if I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, so what, Yana, what is the art that you're trying to sell now? Is it like performance art or is it photography or it's is it a painting? It's a multimedia project. You know, I perform, I, I, sometimes I make these happenings, I make video art, I have site specific photographs. Um, the piece on itself is it's amazing, it's a physical, pretty mind blowing piece. So there are all these ways I've been expressing it and it's been very challenging. So at a certain point, I don't want photographers to photograph, to photograph me before having a contract before. So this means that I, I have to be very protective when I go anywhere. Yeah, I, but I see, I don't, I am like as brass tacks as they come. And so I like, anytime I hear the copyright and this and that and all the rest of it, like, you're an artist, right? You have to have a product to sell. You have to determine what the product is to sell and you need to start selling it. And that is the only truth in the whole thing if you want to actually like monetize and make a career out of it, right? So I think I think you need to be focused focused in that capacity. And just out of curiosity from Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought I heard the Brazilian the, mm -hmm. the accent in there. So that I, I think you gotta decide like what art what art is it that you want to start selling immediately because you wanna make a living off of this, right? And yeah. like, so if I was to ask you, like, what's what's the last art that you attempted to sell? I never sold. Yeah. I never. Yeah, I don't know how to yeah. sell this. So that's that's what we, that's what we have to, to get to. Communicate with people. And um, recently, um, my friend Petra Costa, she's a movie maker from Brazil. She was at Times Square last time I was there with her. We made a beautiful our performance. Mm -hmm. And she was there recently, uh, April this year, I think. And she saw a huge uh, video of two mirror suits just like mine in this huge billboard in the Times Square. So, you know, it's again being copied and it's almost like I have a con, <laughs> like a, uh, another person. And I maybe it's probably Mark Lecouvé, the same people I have to like, you know, go to my lawyer and um, yeah, that, 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 beyond that, all of that annoying copyright lawyer things, yeah. you know, I've been more mature in this process because it's been, uh, it almost killed my creative experience when I was in LA creating another, uh, working on a collaboration with someone else and then uh, this whole thing happened and I'm having to deal with copyrights and lawyers. It was very uncomfortable creative, creatively. So now I'm backing, uh, I'm Moving from that place to, okay, it's more important for me to create my art. And my message is my message. Nobody else can, you know, they can try. To have you, have you, have you built up, to. have you built up a social media pro profile at all? I have a social media profile. It's called have the you, Body of Light Art. Have you, and I haven't been posting for a while. I yeah. have two babies. So now I'm, finally my kids are going back to school and I'm studying art again and I'm working on my project again. This is a lifetime project. Something yeah, for sure, it. for sure, and that and that's and that's a beautiful thing, my... and that's a beautiful thing is you got plenty of time to get it right. I think, you know, the performance art is hard, right? Because it, you're essentially just a service. It's like you're a service photographer. You're usually just getting paid for the hours that you go and devote to it, right? But I do see a number of artists that start with a large following that comes from that because you're not really selling anything there. You're just getting paid to show up and do your thing, or you're just making a piece. But if you build up a big enough following, you can start leveraging that following to sell other types of art. I think you need to come up with some products that you want to sell first and foremost, right? It's it's not about vision. It's not about goals. It's not what you're trying to achieve. It's not where you are shown or whatever else. No one gives a crap about any of that. 
The only thing that matters is did that credit card go sliding through that machine and did you get paid at the end of it? Because that's a business, right? And you need to focus on a business. You want to have a business because you're not going to just get sponsored the rest of your life. So I think you need to focus on what products that you can potentially sell. And it can be services. That's okay, right? Like, you know, I, I, I say the same thing all the time. And I have, I've already made mention of like how diverse our customer base is, right? Like crazy diverse. I don't care what the revenue, I have not met a revenue source I don't like as long as it's legal, right? I've got some customers that are selling classes. I have some customers that are selling books. I have some customers that take people into the national parks and show them how to take photos. I've got some that teach people how to paint, right? And some that do murals, right? Some that do performance art. And that's all good as long as you treat each one like a revenue source, right? Like making it as an artist is really, really hard. And if you don't take the business portion, you know, seriously immediately, then you just have a hobby, right? And so that's that's the worry. But I'll send you I'll send you an email after this, Yana, with some with some things to, to stick to. But my one piece of advice is come up with a product you can sell immediately. And let's get it in front of eyeballs and see what happens. And fire the social media back up for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be looking for that email. Okay. Thanks, Yana. All right, Jessica, you're up next. Go, ahead, Jessica. Uh, yes. Hi, guys. Um, can you tell us more about the, I guess, the price points around the marketing, the strategies, the tools, the uh, the functionality um, and, and the learnings coupled with uh, the website functionalities and like the build out and so on? Are they packages? Is it based per artist and what they're offering? Yeah, yeah. Just Great like what question. you just mentioned of classes versus a physical product that's being shipped, a painting. Like, what does that piece of it look like? Yeah, it's a great question. So Again, this, this session today is just like a meet and greet. You can see how we think, look at things and all that. The, the, next, the next thing to do is request a demo on the website and they give you like an hour tour through everything that we have, all the offerings, all the plans, all the packages, what the back end looks like, the community, but 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 and all of that. Um, and that does a better job of sort of explaining everything. But at the end of the day, we are part technology company, the website and the print on demand and all of that and all the back end and all of that. But really we're, we're a postgraduate university that just teaches art and, and photography business and marketing. That's it. Because that's what the problem is. That's what the problem every single solitary person on this call has. Like, you know, I get in trouble for saying this because we have the most advanced art selling websites on the planet. You know what those you know what those websites are? They're a commodity. They are a commodity, okay? You can get a damn website anywhere you want, right? At the end of the day, it's it, it's like Okay, let's say Jessica goes to WooCommerce or Wix or WordPress and she gets a website and I go and get mine at Art Storefronts. Do you know what they are? Mine is a nicer restaurant with no one in it. Jessica and I both have restaurants with no one in the restaurant except mine's a little bit nicer. What the hell is that gonna do for my career? Absolutely nothing, right? So you have to, like the whole, the whole, the whole ball game is like, how do you get the butts into seats? And so really that's what we do. So I think, it, you know, if it sounds interesting, go and get a demo because they will show you all the plans, all the bells, all the whistles, all the packaging. And we, we do variations of just about all of it. So that's how I would do. Okay. Yeah. All right, Matt, welcome back. Go ahead. How's it going, Patrick? Another day in paradise, brother. Another day in paradise. How you doing? Amazing. So I wanted to one, share some wins and also get some any advice from you on mm -hmm. the position that I'm in right now? Okay. One, it's worth talking about reaching out to large companies. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you've talked about the loop mm -hmm. quite a bit. And um, I actually just introduced myself to a company that I've, well, well I've really been interested in pursuing for a while. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of Joseph Campbell as a mythical artist. Okay. And I wrote them on Instagram the other day. Mm -hmm just introduced myself, said like, hello, I'm, you know, I'm a mythical artist. Uh, he's been a huge inspiration to me and, um, you know, affected my life, my art, and, you know, just wanted to introduce myself and actually got a response oh, from them. Amazing. They actually, yeah. So they actually wrote back like, Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for writing out. You know, uh, mm -hmm. he's been a tremendous influence on me as an artist. And, uh, you know, had a tremendous influence on my life and I'm going to share with the team. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. And so, uh, then, you know, later I created a sketch of Joseph Campbell, like the best sketch that 
I've done like the best pencil sketch that I've done. Mm -hmm. And I shared it with them and they responded really positively to that as well. Awesome. And yeah, so that's really cool to have that, you know, this sort of banter going on. And anyway, what I wanted to share with that is, you know, we think that these people are so unreachable and so untouchable, like these large organizations, when really it, that message, that first message took me like all of maybe 20 seconds yeah. to punch yeah. them up, yep. you know? Yep. It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Like, you know, social media, in, Instagram is harder. Twitter is absolutely the best one or X because it, you know, you can definitely get their attention if you, if you do it correctly. Right. Um, but it's amazing, right? Like no gatekeepers almost directly to the source. Like that's, that's an incredible, incredible thing. The rub of it though, the rub of it though, is a lot of times you won't hear back and a lot of times you will hear no. So it becomes a numbers game, right? It becomes a numbers yeah, game. Sure does. Yeah. yeah, sure does. And you know, so I want to get any insight, like position I'm at right now. I've been blessed to be like featured on Rocky Mountain PBS. I just mm -hmm. found out that it's featured in Beautiful Bizarre Magazine and I'm starting to, starting to get recognized in like these kind of up, this kind of upper level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what you, what, every time that that happens, you want to like, you're probably doing this already, but it, it, it bears mentioning. Let's say you got mentioned in those things, right? And mm -hmm. one, it's a victory. So congratulations. It's awesome. Right. Two, it does not mean a damn thing because you didn't sell anything as a result of it. So understand that, right? Because everyone's like, yeah. oh, I got this win. I was mentioned in such and such. And I, I got juried into a show and da, 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 da. And then I go through my whole little thing where it's like, you hear that knock, Matt? That's me. I'm out front of your house right now. Get in the car with me. We are going to drive to the closest ATM machine from your house and show me where you got mentioned on Rocky Mountain News is, right? There's no button for that on the ATM machine. But every time it happens, make sure you screenshot the crap out of it. Make sure you get the URL. Make sure you get their logo because it all can be social proof on your website. And that's the huge win. It can all be social proof on your socials, right? As featured in, as shared in. So make an Instagram story with it. Save, the, save it to the press, right? That should be right on your Instagram story highlights. Like you should have, you know, you should have one, one of these story highlights that just says press here, right? And boom, you just keep throwing into it, throwing into it, throwing into it. So do that with all, oh, you can't see. There we go. You know, you know what I'm talking about Instagram story highlights? Like your second one should be yeah. press and you should be throwing those things in there. Let me see, I think Meg does a good job of this. Let me see. E -G -H. Did you watch her? podcast episode did i tell you about that um i well you didn't tell me about it but i know which one you're talking about she's the one with uh, her, her story her story is so interesting the, yeah the mugs like yeah yeah just killing it killing it i know i know that this let me sh let me share the screen because i want everyone to see this and, and, and i know sometimes when i do it this way the resolution's a little bit better right but it's like you know so, so i don't know anything about this artist i just arrived at this artist instagram account I'm like, who is this? And I'm gonna scroll around and I'm gonna look at one of the story headlights. I'm gonna see, let's see what kind of press she's gotten, right? Ah, oh, it's live. So she's in this magazine, the Kansas City Star, right? And it's talking about her. Okay, so she's got screenshots of all of it. It's in there. I'm in here, yes. You know, she got a shot of the actual paper, right? So there alone, there's the online mention, same thing, one post. Now it's online on the website, clear, two posts. Now here I am grabbing the actual paper, third one, right? Now she's like showing it off, so. My, my, my. You can get really, really creative um, with it, you know? And, oh, she's on the news. Boom, here she is sharing it. So it's like for you, that Rocky Mountain, like, boom. Like, why aren't you talking about that? Get that in here. And these Instagram stories live forever. And this is just like social proof, right? And people like don't understand, you know, what a big deal this is because all it's gonna make me do as a consumer is come to your site and be like, whoa, this is an artist that's on the up and up. I was right. I'm going to follow them. They're interesting. Let's do this. Right. And so, you know, it's still good. Despite the fact it's not, it, unless it means immediate sales, it's still good. Um, and you want to, you want to just set yourself in a position to leverage it. So that's what I'd say. Right. So good for, good for marketing, which makes it easier to sell. hundred percent, hundred percent. Like it's like anything else. It's all just momentum, right? Like, you know, you get a couple of those press articles and now you're rolling down the hill a little bit faster, right? And you can go back to the well and you can share that one article once a month for the next three years. You can be dining out on it, right? As mentioned in, right? You know what I always wonder? You know what I always wonder about is the, you know, the billboards that they'll put up in Vegas voted the best steakhouse in Vegas, right? Who voted in that thing? 
No one voted in that thing. <laughs> one person voted, and that's all it took. Voted the best steakhouse in Vegas, right? But the point is, is that you can get creative. You can get creative, and it's much better having the social proof than not, right? Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Awesome. Thanks so much, Patrick. Yep. Thanks, man. All right, guys, who else is next? Uh, why, why you guys are asking questions? Case in point, what I said earlier when I went on my little rant, Yana, and you need this. This is, this is important medicine for you. Okay, guys, here I am. Does anyone have any idea what Yana looks like? What makes her interesting? What makes her tick? I know she's a mom. She's got two kids. She's doing these fun things. Okay. Beautiful Brazilian lady. I, there's no picture of what this woman even looks on here, what she's interested in, aside from the fact that she wears a mirror suit and goes to weird places, which is cool, but it's not enough. There's nothing to get bonded to except a mirror suit, and that would be weird if somebody did get bonded in that fashion. So case in point, what I'm talking about, it's got, you guys, it's got to be 50-50. It's got to be 50-50. 50% the art, 50% who you are, what makes you tick, what makes you interesting, right? And so that's, that's, that's how it goes. And I know, I know it's hard at first, and it's a little weird at first, and maybe even a little scary at first, but we have to be contrarian. At the end of the day, all of you guys are here, same as me, and we're all fishermen. Our job is to catch fish. Well, you know what you do? You get in the boat in the morning and you drive the damn boat to where the fish are. And right now, that is the social media platforms. That is how we are attracting more and more attention than doing anything in person or, you know, geographically, a local fair, a local market, a local show. So that's how that goes. But who else, guys? Questions? Comments? Yeah. David, I couldn't tell if you were blocking your phone or if you had a question. I'll, un I'll unmute you just in case you have a question. You can go, David. I couldn't tell if you were raising your hand or not. But for anyone else, you guys, the bottom of the Zoom window, you know, there's a little reactions thing. You can just click that. Okay, Yana's asking a follow-up question. David doesn't look like he has a follow-up question. All right, go, Yana. You have to unmute again. Uh, I'm wondering if <laughs> do I need a website? I was paying for a website for a long time. Yeah, you do. You do. You, 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 you do. You do. I mean, you could you could get um, you know you can get away with Instagram being your website for a little bit, but ultimately, yeah, you have to have a website. A website is just home base, right? And, you know, the, the general rule of thumb is you need to have a home base that's not on rented land. Our Facebook profile is rented land. Our Instagram profile is rented land. YouTube is rented land because we don't control anything there. They can pull the rug on us in 24 hours. And so when you own a URL and it is on a website that's hosted, you have home base no matter what. And so it's really, really important to just do that and have that. So big, big yes on that. And get and going. Then over, uh, we should be able to sell on the website. Yes, uh, yes, 100 percent, 100 percent. And get going and on the more personalized Instagram content and do one today. Do one today, <laughs> before before this call before this call is over. Do one today. Oh, okay. We're all That's we're awesome. all we're all waiting, and I will check back. This is this is the type of like general cajoling, uh, 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 tough love, light harassment that I that I have to do with my customers all the time to just get them to take action because it's the, it's the number one thing, right? Like Jonathan's advice, like you can read, but you better be shipping every single solitary day. All right, Jeff, go ahead. Yep. Hey, Patrick, thank you. Can you hear me? I sure can. Good. I'm not good with this uh, this setup. But, hey, this is the first time I've had a chance to even hear about what this product is. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about it. I appreciate your insight. Oh, thanks. My question is, does your platform support folks that do mixed media art that has, like, one-off pieces? Oh, yeah, all day long. All day long. Okay. So Let me show you. This is what I've got right here. It's this. Oh, shit, it's not showing up. Yeah, you just keep it still for a second and maybe oh, oh yeah. I I, I I know what you're doing because you have like a little circusy background thing, it'll constantly yeah, blare that out. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's exactly right. So that's all I need to know if you support that. And then um What are the what are the price points on them, Jeff? So the I, I hit all price points. Some mm -hmm. things are as cheap as like ten bucks and the most expensive thing is in the three four hundred dollar range. Mm -hmm. And I have some things in a glass vial that have lights and mechanisms no and those can be as much as the thousand cool cool yeah it you know it, it, at the end of the day despite the fact the thing is like specifically geared most of our features towards selling wall art 
since yes. since we've opened up merch and everything else, it's just an e-commerce platform too. Yeah, there it goes. Very trippy. Yeah, so it's wall, it's desk, it's mm -hmm. uh, hanging, it's interactive, it's lighted, it's mechanized. There's all kinds of different variations of it, but it all has to do with the oddity and the curiosity marketplace, which is really disintegrated. Yeah. They're, they're, all those people are crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. and they, don't, they don't all get along. They all fuss and argue, bitch and whine, compete. Mm -hmm. I don't do any of that. I just make cool stuff and sell it. It's got kind of like the rude Goldberg vibe to it a little bit, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, very much. That's very cool. Yes, you can. Okay. And and you know what? I'm looking forward to a demo, and I uh, I got to figure out how to sign up for a demo because I'm all into that. For sure, and they'll and they'll show you everything. I mean, you know, I, I get all these questions too about all. Thank you, Jeff, about all these various different artists. And you don't you know what the reality is is that like you all have a huge marketing problem, and it is the number one problem, right? Like you know, a, a lot of times, a lot of times I'll get sculptors, and sculptors are like, hey, you know, how many how many um sculptors do you have on the platform right and like what does that look like and i'm like yeah we've got some sculptors not not like a lot a lot of sculptors but we have some and like look you still have the marketing problem the same as everyone else but you're a sculptor and your pieces are insanely heavy and made out of marble and hard to ship and they start at five thousand dollars so every sale that you're going to make is pretty much going to come via a zoom call and you're just using the website to set up the zoom calls that's a little bit different than the direct art sales and the e-commerce model but i could care less all of it only happens if you have the demand and you have to drive the demand, right? You have to drive the demand. You guys are responsible for that. And so, you know, that's, that's how the entire, the entire thing shakes out. Um, all right. What else? One of the, one of the things I was, I was sort of telling Matt about this recently. Um, but one of the things that, you know, I've done recently, I get, I get all the time, you guys, these, these comments on social media and they drive me effing nuts. Okay, because the, what, the comments are like, hey, Patrick, who are these artists and photographers that Art Storefronts has made really, really, really successful, right? And I hate those comments because there's no business out there that makes artists or photographers successful. You guys make yourself successful. There's just some companies like us that push you in the right direction and keep you accountable, okay? So we don't make successful artists and photographers, and if anyone tells you that they do, they're lying, they're selling you snake oil. That being said, okay, we have been at this for a long time now, 11,000 customers, and we do have some of the top 1% of art sellers in the United States in terms of revenue. So I have started interviewing some of those folks. The first one I did, and I'm going to send you links to this, so don't worry. First one I did is 29-year-old kid. Um, he's been with us since he was 24. His name's Jonah. He's got a gallery in the panhandle of Florida. In good months, this kid's selling $100,000 worth of his art direct from his website and also in his gallery. Very, very interesting story. I interviewed him for like an hour and then did Q&A. Awesome story. And then the one that I was talking about with Matt um, is this latest one, Meg. It's not the latest one. I did I did one, another one of these last week, actually. Meg, Midwestern painter, okay, nailed some licensing deals early on. She has an insanely interesting story. But what's interesting is that, like, I really turned the screws on them and, and – how are they approaching discounting and how are they approaching their range of pricing and how are they thinking about these various different things and you know how do they do work-life balance all, all a bunch of different questions that you don't just hear out of the marketing guy's mouth and so i think it's pretty interesting i did another one um just last thursday actually with this, this other customer of ours betty franks and that'll be live tuned yeah. live soon too so i will send all of this in an email to you guys um with all the links all the things to click on to check out um if we have any final questions, let me know. Let's see whether or not Yana posted anything. There's nothing there, Yana. She probably can't even probably can't even get back into her account. Probably locked out because it's been so long since you've logged in. I, I, I would imagine. All right, Galena, go ahead. I'm trying to start the um, the video. Yep. Just a sec. All right, I don't know. It's not starting, so I'm yeah, just going to continue. Um, so my question is, and I'm, I, if you haven't, um, touched upon that, mm -hmm. how do you approach marketing in, for individuals? Because from what I understand, I spoke to Nate yesterday mm -hmm. or a couple of days ago, is that the membership, the monthly fee actually includes customized marketing plan. Yes. A am I correct yes. about that? Oh, hundred percent. You're correct about that. So we've had like such an interesting evolution and I pretty much have to explain it this way. So you're going to have to just buckle in and give me five minutes to do this. So like seven years ago, 
eight years ago, we created the websites. We're like, oh my God, this website is better for selling art than any other product on the face of planet Earth. We're going to have this huge business. And a whole bunch of people signed up and then a whole bunch of people canceled. Why? Because they weren't successful. We're like, okay, we have to teach them how to market. So we started out with playbooks. That's where it started. Playbooks, step-by-step classes, lessons, guides on how to do everything. How to capture emails, how to leverage QR codes, how to run a live art show, how to do Facebook and Instagram ads, uh, how to approach discounting, how to approach pricing, right? And we still have those. So there is this... DIY education that we have. Okay, that was step one. Step two, we're like, okay, next we have to create a calendar. And the calendar is going to tell people what to do 365 days a year. It is send an email. There's going to be language that you can use to send the email. We are going to tell you how to contemplate the discounts, when to announce the sale, tease the sale, wrap the sale up, and go through the entire thing, right? That was a great advancement. Not enough. Right when COVID hit, we started with our Zoom classes. Our Zoom classes are just like this one, except they're internal for customers. We run nine of them a week. And there's a whole bunch of different ones you can attend where we teach how to do the various things that we're explaining, okay? And people can ask questions just like on here. Hey, I'm stuck on a Facebook thing. I'm stuck on an Instagram thing. I got this question. I've got that question. What to do about that, okay? So now we have all those three things going. Awesome. Then Zoom released this technology called Breakout Rooms, and it's essentially a Zoom within a Zoom What's cool about it is it's a really, it's a really uh, uh, technologically advanced way to hinder customer support because instead of having to get on the phone, instead of like chatting in a little bubble, you can do a screen share. You can see the other person's face. They can take over control of your computer. So we have breakout rooms in all nine of those sessions all week long. So you look at the calendar and you're like, I'm stuck on this. I'm stuck on that. I'm stuck on some other thing. Can I get help? You go right into the Zoom room. You get in the queue. Someone's looking at you. You can look at your website, fix whatever it is, right? All of that sounds great. All that's amazing. Do you know what I figured at the end of that? Let's, let me give it some teeth. Let's say Mother's Day is coming up, right? Big, big art selling holiday. So we get way ahead of it. We're like, okay, guys, in a month and a half, our Mother's Day sale is going to start. I want all of you guys to get ready. I'm going to teach a class on this. Here's how we're going to do all the things. Here's what you need to get ready, right? Then we get a little bit closer to Mother's Day and everything's published. The calendar's published. The playbook's published. We have one more Zoom. Sales getting teased tomorrow. Guys, good luck. We announce it on Monday. Everybody have everything you need? And I would inevitably get the yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 Patrick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got everything I need. I'm going to run. I'm going to do a great job. Then you know what would happen? They would phone in the efforts. My customers were thrown in the efforts, okay? Instead of doing 27 touch points that it calls for between the marketing and the social and this and then that, they would do like seven or six. And some of the language they would change, right? Because they didn't want to be salesy or whatever. And I was just pulling my hair out of my head nonstop because, you know, it's the whole you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You guys are your own worst enemies when it comes to the marketing and the sales. Always have been, always will be, right? We have to train you out of that mindset. And that's okay. But the, the newest... Um, the newest thing that we cooked up, and I'm sure Nate probably told you about it a little bit, but we have the new service called Copilot, right? And Copilot, because we are connected to your website, because we have all of your images, and because we can drive your website, we also have all of your emails, okay? So we're essentially an ESP, an email service provider. Then we connect to your Facebook, and we connect to your Instagram, and now I can post on your behalf, I can email on your behalf, and I can run sales on your behalf. So... We launched that service in March, and I think we have, I don't know, maybe we have 3,000 of our 11,000 customers on it so far that are all going through their Q4. Is that an additional charge for that service, for the emailing? It is, but they bundle it somehow when you sign up. Um, mm -hmm. But, but where, where I was going with all of it, were you at the beginning of the call or no? Yes, I was. You were. Mm -hmm. So do you, know, do you know how I was saying, and even when I was picking on um, the Brazilian gal, whose name escapes me right now because yeah. I'm terrible at names, yeah. like what Copilot does is all like the nuts and bolts business related stuff, right? So it will run the sale for you. It will rotate through your entire catalog. It'll show your products. Yes, Yana, sorry. I, I was, I saw she turned camera. Anyway, that's what Copilot does. So now mm. what I need you to do, Galena, is all the stuff that Copilot can't do. I need you to show that little window into your world and what makes Galena tick and what makes her interesting, right? And where did her creative eye come from? And so my position is like why I think we're the best because if you are completely dialed in and have everything going, all you have to work on is creating your artwork and doing that portion of your marketing. We take care of all the rest. But what it doesn't do, Copilot, it doesn't do 100% of your marketing for you. There's nothing that'll, that'll ever do that, right? So Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But I, I, I you right, know, I, I also intuitively like, even if you're going to own the McDonald's, you know, you probably should spend a little bit of time flipping the burgers, a little bit of time making the fries, and a little bit of time ordering, and a little bit of time dropping, operating the cash register, so you know, right? It's your business. So, I, I, I'm certainly not opposed to my to my customers doing all of the marketing and learning how to do it and getting their feet wet and getting going, right? Like very, very important part. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The email is the issue. I, I have a followers, I have friends, I have Facebook, all of that. I have content, I believe I do. But, um, you know, emails is the issue. I don't have any database. Yeah. So and that's okay. And, and most artists are like that. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you have tens of thousands of emails or you have none. Do you know how a list is built, Galena? One email at a time. <laughs> One email at a time, right? And and we all do that all year long. Like, you know, we teach you the various different strategies, techniques, tips, tactics, all of that to to get there and do that. So that's what I'd say. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Liam. All right, guys. Personal victory for Yana. Everyone can now look at Yana's Instagram page, okay, and realize she likes hiking. So we now know she likes hiking and she goes hiking. This is a positive step. Yana, this is a positive step, okay? Step in the right direction. That's what I'm talking about. We at least know that there is a real human. <laughs> she likes hiking, not in mirror suits, okay? Not in mirror suits. So there's a, there's a step in the right direction. But good job, my dear. Now do it consistently, okay? Five to six times a day, every single solitary week, week in, week out for the next three to five years. No one wants to talk about that part, right? Because it's not sexy, but that's what it takes. That's what it takes. And even if you're, you know, as you're doing like all these setups in this crazy mirror suit business, like show yourself getting getting done up in that that outfit, however that works, and how you have to drive there. Like you know, the process of doing performance art is also like a really really cool thing. Um, all right, I will send all of you guys a replay. I appreciate all of you for sticking it out. I think all of you should go and get a demo if you're interested. You should definitely sign up and get going before Q4. If you're not interested and you're just getting started and you were just here to learn, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. We'll be here. I want all of you guys to subscribe to the podcast, though. It's very good, and I'm hitting this thing very, very hard this year. You can find this anywhere. Um, you know, it's on Spotify, and it's on Apple Podcast, and it's on anywhere that you could find a podcast called The Art Marketing Podcast, That Ugly Orange Logo. Uh, once you find it, you'll know that's the right one and, you know, release a lot of ton of like really good step-by-step -step tactical how to do this, that, and the other on there as well as all the interviews. So, all right. I feel like we made some progress today. I appreciate all of you. I want you to all have a wonderful week and hope to see you on a future episode inside or elsewhere. All right. And get posting. Get posting on Instagram. Q4 is coming. All right. Jennifer, I can't tell. Was that a last minute I have a question or no? No, she's like, okay, just saying thanks. All right, thanks, guys.